Good morning. Hope all of you are having a wonderful Wednesday that you're feeling just energetic and the warrior that you are. So I wanted to hop in um, since I tend to like Wednesdays, probably because of, you know, my lovely play on words and stuff. And it is to me, not only hump day, you know, that middle of the week and trying to assess what you've done so far, what you still need to do to be able to get to the weekend. But I like to attribute it to being wonderful and a warrior. And um, what else does life have in store for me? You know, all these wonderful W words. So, but today I want, so today, (laughs) what I wanted to talk about was not only reflecting on the wonderful retreat that I went to um, earlier this month as we wrap up this nurturing November and all the wonderful things November has brought for each and every one of us and hopefully giving us a chance to reflect on all of the beautiful gifts um, that we've been able to have in this month. But so I'm wanting to reflect on how we are a whole, right? We are a whole body. We are a whole being. Um, And I wanted to specifically share with you about um, my journey with healing from Hashimoto's and healing with my Hashimoto's. Um, And one of the things is reminding myself that I am Kelly. I am not Hashimoto's. I am not my dysmorphia. I'm not PCOS. I'm not all the inflammation. I am not my brain fog. I am not my leaky gut. I am not broken. I am not, I am not, not a child of God. I am not all of these, these symptoms of my physical health. What I am is I am someone who loves to go for walks, someone who loves to read, someone who loves to prepare food in the kitchen and to experiment. I love crafting and researching, creating, inspiring, sharing, consoling, lifting, uh, lifting people's spirits as well as lifting for my muscles. Um, I love all of these different actions and all of these different ways that nurture my body sometimes, but also nurture my soul. And that's something that I think when a person has a health journey, um, uh, hi Tino, I like being able to shout out, so make sure and put thumbs up and, and, and hearts and all that stuff if uh, you get a chance to. Um, I'm trying to remember to like notice whenever things scroll down there on the bottom. So, but anyways, so we can't separate our body and our spirit. Um, and I want to share with you this. So one of the things with our healing journeys, whether it's physical or spiritual, remembering that if we have a physical ailment or frustration, that what spiritual aspect do we need to be working on? If we have some spiritual stuff going on, that could affect our physical um, being. So I really like how this study that I'm doing with my daughter called the Ducat, um, Number 52, it says, of what does the unity of the human person consist? A human being has a body and a soul, but these are not separate realities. The human person always consists of a unity of body and soul. Materialism regards the soul as a mere function of the material body. Spiritualism is the contrast overvalues the soul as at the expense of the body. The church rejects both errors. Our body is not the prison of the soul, and the soul is an essential part of a living human being. Through this body, man is connected with the earth and is thus a part of nature. In his spiritual soul, a human being not only finds his personal identity, his I, his soul also contemplates God and is forever contemplated by him. The soul is immortal, but the body too must never be despised because it is created by God as something good 
and it is destined for the resurrection of the body on the last day. Jesus recognized the bodily sufferings of human beings and healed them. Man is at the same time a material and a spiritual being. So we sometimes, I think, get so caught up in separating the two and we forget um, that we can't. We can't separate the two. It's kind of like we... So many things in our, our system, in our society, has gotten so broken. I mean, even look at our, our health care. Um, we go to a doctor. Um, there's doctors for all these different specialties, right? And that's great. I, I love being able to see people who are able to specialize or, you know, really focus on where their, their passions are. That's what makes us all uniquely, individually different, right, and beautiful. But when... A heart doctor, for example, doesn't take into consideration that there might be something going on than just this part of the body, that this could have a connection to the foot, or it could have a connection to something going on with your thoughts, even, um, going on with our gut, that when we try to separate each of our parts, we forget that we are all one we are all parts of one body, right? So what do I do? What are some of the things that I do that helps me nurture my healing with my Hashimoto's, with my inflammation, you know, all these physical things, but also help nurture my healing of my spiritual health? So there's two really big things that have been really resonating in me to share with you guys. One is how interesting it is that here I read from the Ducat about how we can't separate the body and the spirit, right? And then when I went on the Healing the Whole Person retreat, see if you can see this, all right? When I went on the Healing the Whole Person retreat, um, again, that same thing was talked about, how sometimes when we have spiritual junk that we're working on, that we're needing to work on, it can manifest in physical ailments because we haven't worked on the stuff. Or there's so many layers of spiritual stuff going on on top of genetical stuff, on top of, you know, this and that, you know, um, the way we eat or all these different things, right? How it can manifest physically because we're not nurturing what's going on internally. And then on the same flip, here's something that's not even a faith-based um, program called, it was the autoimmune series that I watched the last couple of weeks um, that is all about, you know, the science of, of autoimmune conditions, all the different things environmentally, our nutrition, all these different things. But they kept resonating and they kept talking a little bit, you know, here and there about the spiritual connection. There was one woman, and it really resonated in me, she was talking about her Hashimoto's, when it manifested, how it manifested, and all those things. And she was able to come to the fact that the root of her Hashimoto's, with all of the environmental stuff, you know, that is going on, and her, her diet and stuff like that, but even when she cleaned up her diet, that she got to the root that it was hurts and pains from her childhood abuse that had manifested and had stayed hidden for so long that her spirit was trapped, her spirit was stifled, her spirit was not being able to heal. And so it started to create all these other manifestations within her physical body. So this might sound woohoo to you, but I'm living proof of it. There's so many people that are living proof with, you know, that our physical and our spiritual body is so very connected. So I want you to think about that as you go about day to day and your thing. And I'm not saying that every single little, you know, you start getting a cold, a flu, and oh, what could be the physical manifestation, but instead, or what could be the spiritual manifestation, but instead consider that, okay, I'm coming down with a cold. I just traveled. I probably, you know, came across some things going on. And during my travel, I was really working on some, you know, uh, spiritual things, um, or I discovered this about my family, or, you know, different, see if there's any connection, any correlation. Um, I've been able to, through all my healing journey, um, even reflect so much as the last 
uh, three, four years, some of the layerings that brought forth my thyroid storm that, um, that I wouldn't have realized or really brought to light if I hadn't been doing and working on all of this amazing work of understanding that we are mind, body, soul connected. So before I wrap up, what I want to do is I want to share with you some of the things that I do that helps me on my healing journey, especially with um, having been diagnosed with Hashimoto's. So whether yours is another type of autoimmune disease or whether yours is um, something that is going on uh, mentally, whether it's something that's going on spiritually, you know, we all have, we're all broken in a way, but we're not broken. Does that make sense? We're not broken because that's, that's a negative. It, it's, it's more of we have healing. We all have healing to do, even if it's tiny or a lot. So let's think about ways that we can nurture our healing and we can thrive through our healing so that we can get to be a whole person. Um, and we're not ever going to attain perfection, right? Because there's only one who is perfect, and, um, or there's only one who is perfect, and there's only one who was able to walk on this earth and do things perfectly, and we strive for that, right? But we also don't want the negative connotation of perfection. So ways that I help recently, um, especially with healing um, my whole body, is that I, number one, I take it to God. I always take it to God. Um, and number two, and, and that means whether I'm writing in my journal, um, I, keep a little, I keep little journals and notebooks everywhere. Um, so there's one in my purse, there's one in my prayer corner, there's one by my bed, there's, you know, journals and notebooks everywhere for me. And it really helps me be able to write down special uh, scriptures that come to me or positive thoughts. Like, for example, in this one, I happen to have, um, since I've been, since the retreat, I've been working on specifically um, fear and anger and shame and stuff like that. So my affirmation is, I am filled with faith in my future. I have perfect peace with God. Okay? And then I have different scriptures. Um, one, two Timothy, uh, uh, chapter one, verse seven, for God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. So it's things like that, that I have written down. Um, and it, and it goes on. So, um, have something that gives you affirmations and ways to be able to have outlet, you know, with God, even if it means yelling at him. Have a communication. He already knows how you feel. All right? He already knows if you're angry, if you're hurt, if you're wounded, if you're, you know, feeling pride. He already knows what you're feeling. So rather than trying to think that you have to be perfect and just write this perfect prayer or say this perfect prayer, because um, you can't, take it to him. Say, Lord, I am so angry that I have this. I don't understand. Take my anger because I know that anger is not from you. I know that I need to find the peace because the opposite of fear and anger is faith. And so give me peace. Help me experience your peace. Help me to experience your faith. So that's something that I do every single day, every single morning and multiple times during the day. Um, another thing I do is I do things that are comforting for me. I usually go to a book. I read and reread books, especially if I'm having a day where I'm frustrated about my inflammation or I'm frustrated that my legs are just not moving the way I would like to or I'm frustrated because, you know, whatever, right? Because I'm expecting too much for myself, right? So I, for me, my comfort is books. I go to books. Um, but then I also enjoy cooking. I enjoy creating something fun in the kitchen, something that is going to be for fellowship as well as, you know, nourishment. Um, I love going for walks. Right now it's been kind of cold, so I've been pulling my mini trampoline in, and I get on that, and I just kind of, you know, uh, do a quick, you know, rebounding session. 
um, or I'll do jump squats or do some stretching or convince my daughter to dance to a song. Um, and I laugh. I remind myself to laugh. If I find myself kind of frowning and all stuff, I just all of a sudden just try to brighten it up and it's goofy and silly. But think about it. It makes you feel alive when you all of a sudden just start smiling and laughing and sing at the top of your lungs. So some of the books that I've been going to recently, especially, um, and rereading is, um, Lewis, uh, Lewis Hayes, heal your body. So whenever I'm feeling a certain ailment or whatever, I'll go to it. So let's just open it up and we'll use, um, a, an example. So here it says hypothyroidism. Um, some of the feelings that I could be feeling, it's not a guarantee, but I could be feeling like I'm wanting to give up, feeling hopeless or stifled. Um, so an affirmation could be, I create a new life with new rules that totally support me. Um, and I, I change it around. I make sure that it's not about me. It's about me turning to God. So Lord, I, I go to you with my life. I ask you to help me with how I can totally support me. How can I honor you? So things like that. Um, another thing is I'll go to, um, books like the coconut oil miracle and reminding myself why, um, I use coconut oil every single day, why and how it's helpful and beneficial with my brain health and my gut and my inflammation, things like that, which then I also go to a spiritual book that is called switch on your brain and, uh, and it really is awesome because it talks about the spiritual things um, with our connections of our brain and our, um, our mind and our body and our, and our soul. So this has been a really great book that I came across a couple weeks ago that I've been enjoying a lot. Um, I'll reread different um, verse or different uh, lines and paragraphs from the Paleo Coach, um, he, uh, Jason Seib. Um, what I love about this book is it's not about how to get physically fit um, or how to necessarily eat perfect. You know, it definitely goes into the, all that stuff. And remember, can't eat perfect. <laughs> but it's about really getting inside of who you are and what type of beliefs do you have about yourself. Um, and it's amazing to me because here's a man who wrote this book, um, and really gets it really, you know, he understands somehow what could be going on in the psyche of a woman. Um, another book that I've been reading recently is the healing intelligence of essential oils. Um, one of the things that I just love about essential oils is how it reminds us that these amazing gifts from the earth are from God and these oils can help us physically mentally and emotionally and there's not a single day that I have not by the end of the day had probably close to 20 different layers of 20 different oils um, on my body as well as diffusing as well as you know taking in um, because I see and I experience the great benefits of these gifts that God has given us um, then I've been rereading the slow down diet, um, a little bit off and on, not a whole lot, but my big thing I like about this book by Mark David is reminding us that food to eat food for pleasure, energy and energy to the pleasure. You know, we get so caught up, especially when you're trying to figure out what foods could possibly be causing inflammation or is holding you back from certain goals. We start making food more of a science um, or we rush it down and we forget that it's about breathing, taking it in, allowing your body to truly, if you're having negative thoughts going on in your head, you can eat the healthiest food on the planet, it's not gonna process in your body properly because you've got gunk going on here, you've got gunk going on here. So 
You have to be fully connected. And the only way to do that is to stop. Breathe. Slow down. Allow your mind to reconnect with your gut. Allow your spirit to reconnect with your gut so it can take in all that amazing nutrition. Um, my absolute and total favorite Hashimoto's book is The Root Cause uh, by Dr. Isabel Wentz. Why do I love this book? Because she's there. She's been there, done that. She has Hashimoto's herself. There's some other really great books I have that I love, but I reread this book all the time, um, especially when I'm having frustrations um, or woe is me, you know, um, because my hormones are off and wacky. Um, I go to this book. I go to this book because she's been there, done that, and she is thriving. She is proof positive that you can go from your lowest to your lowest of your symptoms, and you can thrive. You can become a doctor if that's what you strive to do. You can become an astronaut if that's what you strive to do. You can do amazing things still in spite of, despite of, because of a autoimmune condition. You can reverse it. You can. All right. Some people say, no, you can't and all that stuff. But there is proof positive through that autoimmune series of people reversing it. Yes, there's certain things that we have genetic, you know, this, and there's certain foods that, you know, are never going to be healthy, that, that shouldn't be part of our diet or anything. Um, but it, it is, again, that body and spirit connection and being able to truly see the power of healing. When you believe in healing, then healing takes place. And that is the power that she gives me, as well as all these other books. So rounding up, um, one of my absent total favorite cookbooks that I go to is Practical Paleo. Um, because she has in the very, very beginning, uh, Diane Sar San Filippo, she has in the beginning um, different food restrictions, different types of, of diets, different types of ways to nurture. So I have specifically, you know, thyroid type of cookbooks, um, the GAPS, the AIP, all these different specific cookbooks. Um, but I like hers because she keeps things simple. Um, I know how to tweak things and it's colorful and it's just, it's a fun cookbook for me to use. My most recent morning um, prayer book that I've been using is Prayers for Victory in Spiritual Warfare. It, um, it has been a fab by Tony Evans, a fabulous book. I read um, a chapter or a section each day um, of just how to keep myself armored, my spiritual armor. And then, of course, I do um, the prayers in the Healing the Whole Person retreat that, again, helps keep my armor strengthened. And then the final book that I have been going to on a daily basis as well is The Essential Life in reminding me how much I love my oils, why I love my oils, and how to continue to incorporate them in my life in other ways that I may not have thought about, how I can help share with others about this amazing life um, through healing and through using oils and through just being abundant with our life and how we can then help others to be able to feel whole and amazing and to not separate our body from our spirit. So those are my thoughts on this wonderful Wednesday. I hope you guys have a beautiful, blessed rest of your day and remember that you are amazing. You were made and created for greatness. Have a glorious, glorious day. God bless.